Uh, good morning, my name is Brian Spitz. I'm president of Big State Home Buyers, and today we are talking with Daryl Dyke, who is uh, the president of Noble Mortgage. It's a mortgage company here in Houston that specializes in investment loans, but he's going to talk to us today about regular consumer loans, FHA loans, and what's going on in the general lending market for consumers. So thanks for joining us today. Sure, thanks for having me, Brian. Sure. Well, I wanted to start, you know, we've seen a huge uh, upswing in real estate prices and sales and all of that stuff in the Houston market right now. It's actually hard to believe um, what a seller's market it is. But, um, you know, for a while, lending was really strict and really difficult for the average person to get a loan. And I wanted to find out from you what you see happening in the loan market right now. Yeah, I mean, the loan market hasn't changed too terribly much in the last five years since all the new regulations have come down. But it's, it's still very capable, I mean, very possible for people to get a loan. For a primary residence or someone who's purchasing a loan, you really have two avenues, which are FHA and Fannie Mae lending. Um, FHA is typically you need to have at least about a 620 credit score, but you can put down as little as 3.5% right. down payment on it. Fannie Mae, very similar also, but you typically need to have about a 5% down payment. But these are 30 year fixed mortgages. Um, very low interest rates still. They're higher than they were a year ago, but they're still hovering around on a 30-year fixed mortgage around 4%, maybe a little bit under. So still a very good loan market. You do need to be able to document your income, qualify for a debt-to-income ratio based on your current debts. And what's um, what, what do they lend up to? Because there's a cap to how much FHA and Fannie Mae will lend on a house, isn't there? There's a jumbo, a jumbo loan in the Houston market is considered 400, over $417,000. So as long as your loan amount is under in that, you're not considered a jumbo. There are loans available for jumbos, but they're not in that, in that same platform. And so how difficult is it to get a jumbo loan? Uh, typically on a jumbo loan, you need to have a little bit more down payment. I mean, the qualifications are the same. You need to have more like 680 credit because it's more on the Fannie Mae platform and you need to qualify still for the payments. Mm -hmm. And so the, all that is pretty similar, but you do need to have more of a down payment, normally about a 20% down payment on a jumbo loan. So tell us, as um, far as a debt to income ratio, how much, you know, generally the bank will want your mortgage payment to comprise X percentage of your total you know, income for the month. Where does that, what, generally what is that? A good rule of thumb for your debt to income ratio is you take your gross income, let's say on a monthly basis, multiply that by 40% and they want your housing expenses including your taxes and insurance and any other monthly obligations that you have such as car payments, um, installment loans, any other mortgages you have need to fall in that 40% ratio. It doesn't count utilities, it doesn't count um, you know, food, it doesn't count daycare, things like that. So pretty much anything that's recorded on your credit report, they look at those minimum payments and they weigh that against your income. Okay, so the less debt you have, the more of a mortgage you can pick up. That's correct. Right. And that 40%, sometimes you can go 45, we'd even see as high as 50 if you have other compensating factors such as liquid assets and so forth. Right. What's your opinion of the market right now in Houston? The Houston market is doing unbelievable right now. The market, like you said, has just completely exploded in the span of a year. Um, so it's a seller's market. Sellers are putting their properties on the market above and beyond maybe what the market price is. And in certain areas, especially the hot markets, you have people in bidding wars bidding above right. and beyond what that home is really going to appraise for. And right. So we've actually run into situations where the property doesn't appraise because they're bidding above and beyond the market price. So they have to come to closing with that cash above. The Correct appraisal price. Correct because a lender is going to loan. They're going to arrive at their loan to value, which is a loan based on the purchase price or the sales price, whichever is lower. So if it doesn't appraise, then you would have to bring that extra equity to the closing table. Okay, interesting. And um, anything else that you can think of right now in the? You know, the the thing we always tell people is before you even start looking for houses to get pre-qualified, because. The realtors are so busy right now that they don't want to, you know, spend time with the buyer. A seller most of the time won't even accept an offer unless they know they have a pre-qualified buyer. Right. So it's important <clears throat> to get pre-qualified up front so you know exactly what you can qualify for. Right. Even here at Big State Home Buyers, we sell and buy residential real estate. We sell to a lot of investors, but we do sell quite a few uh, properties to regular residential buyers, and so. Same thing here, we, we really won't look at a financed offer without a pre-approval. 
which also uh, reminds me of a question. How valid are pre-approval letters? What's the, what kind of research does the mortgage lender really do before they'll issue a pre-approval? You know, it depends on the lender, but mm -hmm. when you get a pre-approval for anybody, you're supposed to use a promulgated form that the state provides to us. And in that form, it has boxes that you check. You know, what have you verified? Have you verified their credit? Have you verified their financials? Have you ran a debt ratio? And so it should state on there exactly what they have verified. Uh, truth be told, it depends on the lender. Right. You know, some of those pre-approval letters, uh, we, we try to go to make sure that we know without a shadow of a doubt that they qualify. Some lenders don't go to those steps. You know, they right. pull their credit report, they have good credit, they'll issue a pre-approval letter. So as a seller, you want to make sure you verify how qualified they really are. And you can do that by contacting the mortgage broker or studying the forms to see what they've, what they've checked off? I would contact the mortgage broker. That's If I'm selling my property, just because I know how the real estate industry works, right. I would want either my agent to, or I would want to talk to that loan officer specifically and verify mm -hmm. that they have gone through all the steps and have ran their debt ratio and have looked at their credit and have verified their assets as opposed to just taking their word for it. Right. I know a few years ago when the loan market was even was more lax, it was really easy for people to get pre-approval letters. and. For us, we do go and talk to the mortgage broker when we get a pre-approval just because I'm, I remember when those letters really didn't mean anything. So, you know, it's real important, I think, for a seller to check that out and also in our position, see, because there's so much competition for these houses and so much bidding going on, you really want to capture, the, in my opinion, the first round good offer. You know, you don't want to see the property bust out and then put it back on the market. I mean, my opinion is, is you get your best offer first. And I agree with that. That's why, again, when I'm selling a property that I own, I don't want to take it off the market. Right. Because once you put it as a pending sale, you're going to have a whole slew of agents that are not even going to show your property anymore. Right. And so before I take a property off the market or put it as a pending or that we have an offer pending, I want to make sure that this buyer can at least qualify right. and you take that part out of it. Right. Interesting. Well, um, unless you can think of anything else then uh, I'd say thank you for being with us today. Tell us how we can uh, reach your company. Sure. Well, we're on the web at noblemoney.com, or you can call our office here in Houston at 713-680-8100. And again, that's Daryl Dyke with Noble Mortgage, and this is Brian Spitz with Big State Home Buyers. You can find us at www.bigstatehomebuyers.com or call us at 713-263-7466. Thank you.